Hello friends, welcome back to Let's Do It Accountancy. Hi, so we are back again with another practical and interesting mission. So what are we doing today? Here's our old client, Mr. Daniel. He has misplaced his cash book and he needs our help to build a cash and bank record out of the previous year and the current year's balance sheet and some additional information that he is confident about. Now, we won't be able to make a proper date-wise cash and bank record, but at least we can provide a summary to him. We are given the 2014 and 2015 statement and we have to prepare the cash summary for 2015. And if you are new to this channel, do subscribe and press the bell icon to get all the updates regarding further uploads. Also, you can press the join button to become our prime member where you can get many benefits with online courses at very minimum prices. So do check that out and join us now. Do visit our website www.letstude.com to see our online courses at very affordable prices. Are you with me? Let's go for it and do our best. Let's take a look at the two statements. They are arranged side by side for easy comparison. And these are the notes he provided. Hmm. So what should we do? For the summary, let's prepare a table and with cash and bank columns on each side. And here at the end, we have a total balance column. So we'll start by putting down the opening balances, cash and bank, both have a debit balance, cash 25,560 and bank 7,740. And their total balance is 33,300. To this, we have to add all receipts and incomes related to cash and bank and subtract all the payments made out of cash or bank, right? So what are the incomes or receipt? Stock does not have anything to do with cash or bank. Money received for sales. Sales are on credit basis as mentioned on the note. We need to calculate the amount we have received in this period. Now last year we had debtors of 14,635 and plus this year we have sales of 90,000 so that's 104,635. Out of this amount we have debtors who haven't paid this year that is 11,332 and we have bad debts of 50. So when we subtract that we get 93,253. So that is the amount that we have received for sales. In the bank column, as it is on credit basis, let's write it down. Same way in the less or the paid side, payment towards purchases to creditors this year is how much? Previous year's pending is 3,300. Plus this year's purchases are 75,200 minus the creditors in 2015 that is what is still owed for payment towards purchases that comes up to 76,468. Next going to the profit and loss account here we've got commission the commission receivable last year is 700 and this year again it is 700. This probably means last year's accrued commission was received this year. So we'll add 700 in the cash column as, as it is receivable in cash. And interest 400 received by check. So we add that as well, but in the bank column. Now what about payments or expenses paid? All expenses are paid for in cash. Our total expenses from cash will be rent, 
printing, taxes, salary, advertisement and interest. That comes to how much? Let's calculate 12,080. So in the left side, we are writing expenses, 12,080. Why not bank charges or depreciation? Bank charges would go in the bank column. 20 bank charges. We can notice that machinery value has increased quite a bit and we are also given in the note clearly that machinery was purchased. But what is the amount of the new machinery purchased? Let's calculate. Last year machinery was valued at 3500 and 700 was the depreciation charged on it. So the value comes to 2800. So we can say new machinery purchased must have been 2800. Subtracting it from the current value. Maybe it was purchased towards the end of the year and therefore there's no depreciation on this new machinery. And here we have another note saying cash is deposited in the bank 1000. So what do we do for this? We will add it in the bank column as it is deposited in bank and we will subtract it or less from our cash column. Let's do the totals. So here the cash comes up to 13,180 which is tallied to our 2015 closing balance. The bank balance is 21,905 which again is tallied. And the total comes up to 37,085. So you saw it's not really difficult to derive a cash and bank summary if you have the balance sheets and some basic information with you. However, this is all we can do from our end, thinking about it as a limited assignment. So we can present this to our client, Mr. Daniel, and he can verify it physically. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this session. If you liked our session, do like, share and comment. And yes, don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get the updates for all our upcoming videos. Do visit our website www.letstude.com to see our online courses at very affordable prices. So see you in the next session. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.